Hey everyone, I'm Mr. Willis, and you will love economics. Money comes in various forms and serves several functions, but ultimately, it originates in the money market. The money market is the location where money, in all its forms, is exchanged between banks, consumers, firms, and government at various nominal interest rates. In this video, we'll analyze the money market, and let's start by breaking down money supply and money demand. Money demand is defined as the desired quantity of money balances held in either cash or bank checkable deposits at various nominal interest rates. In the aggregate economy, consumers and other borrowers use money. And so, the demand for money is comprised entirely of the quantities of money that consumers and borrowers are willing and able to use at various nominal interest rates. There are two types of money demand. The first is transaction demand. Transaction demand refers to the money demanded for the everyday purchases of goods and services. This is when consumers need or want money to buy food, clothes, and other consumer goods to meet their utility. The second is asset demand. Asset demand refers to the money demanded to store value in interest-bearing assets. This is when investors demand money to purchase stocks, bonds, and near-money accounts to preserve the purchasing power of the money for future use. This is the money demand curve. Notice that it is a downward sloping curve, implying that the relationship between nominal interest rates and the quantity of money demanded is inverse. This means that as nominal interest rates rise in the aggregate economy, Consumers and other borrowers are less willing or less able to use the same quantity of money and therefore use less. As nominal interest rates fall in the aggregate economy, consumers and other borrowers are more willing or more able to use the same quantity of money and therefore use more. Remember that the interest rate is the price of borrowing money. If a consumer is going to borrow or use money to make purchases, the consumer must pay a price to acquire that money needed to complete the purchase. And so, Consumers and those who borrow money in the aggregate economy consider the price of money before borrowing it. If nominal interest rates rise in the aggregate economy, consumers and borrowers will have to pay more to banks and other lenders to borrow their money. In order to avoid paying higher interest on every dollar they use, consumers and borrowers will use less money, causing the quantity of money demanded in the money market to decrease. For example, assume that at a nominal interest rate of 4%, Consumers and other borrowers demand $500 billion from banks and other lenders. If the nominal interest rate climbs to 7%, consumers and borrowers are either less willing or less able to demand the same quantity of money because it is more expensive to use money. While some consumers will still use money at an interest rate of 7%, other consumers will avoid the higher interest rate and choose to slow their consumption, resulting in a decrease in the quantity of money demanded to $300 billion. As a result, an increase in nominal interest rates across the aggregate economy causes a decrease in the quantity of money demanded and a movement along the money demand curve from point A to point B. If nominal interest rates are low in the aggregate economy, consumers and borrowers will pay less to banks and other lenders to borrow their money. In order to take advantage of the lower interest rate on every dollar they use, consumers and borrowers will use more money, causing the quantity of money demanded in the money market to increase. For example, assume that at a nominal interest rate of 5%, consumers and other borrowers demand $200 billion from banks and other lenders. If the nominal interest rates fall to 3%, consumers and borrowers are either more willing or more able to demand the same quantity of money because it is less expensive to use money. Other consumers will be eager to take advantage of the lower interest rates and choose to increase their consumption, resulting in an increase in the quantity of money demanded to $500 billion. As a result, a decrease in nominal interest rates across the aggregate economy causes an increase in the quantity of money demanded and a movement along the money demand curve from point B to point A. Fundamental changes in economic conditions can cause consumers and borrowers to demand a lesser or greater quantity of money at every nominal interest rate. This is caused by a change in money demand, which is visualized by a shift of the money demand curve. There are three determinants to money demand a change in price level, a change in real GDP output, and a change in transaction costs. A change in any of these three determinants will cause a fundamental change in money demand, 
which will impact nominal interest rates and lead to a change in the aggregate economy. A rightward shift of the money demand curve indicates that the demand for money has increased in the aggregate economy, and a greater quantity of money is being used, no matter the nominal interest rate in the aggregate economy. Higher or lower interest rate doesn't matter. Consumers and other borrowers are using more money. A leftward shift of the money demand curve indicates that the demand for money has decreased in the aggregate economy, and a lesser quantity of money is being used, no matter the nominal interest rate in the aggregate economy. Higher or lower interest rate doesn't matter. Consumers and other borrowers are using less money. Let's take a closer look at money demand. A change in price level will fundamentally change money demand. Inflation means goods and services are more expensive. And when goods and services are more expensive, quite simply, more money is needed to buy them. I mean, if a good that normally costs $1 now costs $2, then I need twice as much money than I used to to buy it. So, an increase in price level causes an increase in money demand, which means greater quantities of money are demanded at every nominal interest rate. Deflation means goods and services are less expensive. And when goods and services are less expensive, quite simply, less money is needed to buy them. If a good that normally costs $1 now costs 50 cents, then I only need half as much money than I used to to buy it. So, a decrease in price level causes a decrease in money demand, which means lesser quantities of money are demanded at every nominal interest rate. A change in real GDP output will change consumption levels across the economy, which fundamentally changes money demand. If the economy experiences economic growth and real GDP output increases, income levels will rise across the economy as more workers find employment. With more disposable income to spend, consumers will buy more goods and services, which requires greater quantities of money, no matter the nominal interest rate. So, an increase in real GDP output will lead to an increase in consumption, which causes an increase in money demand, which means greater quantities of money are being demanded at every nominal interest rate. If an economy experiences economic contraction and real GDP output decreases, income levels will fall across the economy as fewer workers find employment. With less disposable income to spend, consumers will buy fewer goods and services, which requires lesser quantities of money, no matter the nominal interest rate. So, a decrease in real GDP output will lead to a decrease in consumption, which causes a decrease in money demand, which means lesser quantities of money are demanded at every nominal interest rate. And, a change in transaction costs will fundamentally change money demand. Transaction costs are the extra fees, tolls, or taxes that are added to the price of a product and must be paid in order to complete a transaction. Examples of transaction costs are sales tax and those pesky ATM fees. Much like inflation, an increase in transaction costs means goods and services are more expensive. And when goods and services are more expensive, quite simply, more money is needed to buy them. If an increase in the sales tax drives the price of a product up by $2, then I need more money than I used to to buy it. So, an increase in transaction costs causes an increase in money demand, which means greater quantities of money are demanded at every nominal interest rate. And, much like deflation, a decrease in transaction costs means goods and services are less expensive. And when goods and services are less expensive, quite simply, less money is needed to buy them. If my local gas station removes that stupid ATM fee they charge at every pump, making each fill up $3 less expensive, then I don't need as much money as I used to to buy my gasoline. So, a decrease in transaction costs causes a decrease in money demand, which means lesser quantities of money are demanded at every nominal interest rate. Money supply is defined as the total amount of money in the economy in both cash and bank checkable deposits at various nominal interest rates. In short, the supply of money is the sum of all M1, M2, and M3 types of money in the economy. In the aggregate economy, only one entity can supply money, the Federal Reserve. The Fed will use monetary policy tools to increase or decrease the supply of money in the money market and can therefore influence nominal interest rates and ultimately investment spending by firms and credit spending by consumers. We'll cover monetary policy and the Federal Reserve in another video. For now, let's take a look at the money supply. This is the money supply curve. Notice that it is a perfectly vertical curve, implying that the relationship between the nominal interest rate and the quantity of money supplied is constant. 
This means that as nominal interest rates rise in the aggregate economy, the Federal Reserve will maintain a fixed quantity of money supplied. As nominal interest rates fall in the aggregate economy, again, the Federal Reserve will maintain a fixed quantity of money supplied. You see, the Federal Reserve does not have a profit motive to supply a greater quantity of money as nominal interest rates increase and a lesser quantity of money as nominal interest rates decrease. Instead, the Fed's motivation is purely to fine-tune economic performance by controlling the amount of M1, M2, and M3 in the economy. As a result, the quantity of money supplied by the Fed will remain constant, regardless of the nominal interest rate, until the Fed either injects money into or takes money out of the aggregate economy. A rightward shift of the money supply curve indicates that the supply of money has increased in the economy, and a greater quantity of money is now available for use, no matter the nominal interest rate in the aggregate economy. Higher or lower interest rate doesn't matter. Banks and financial institutions now have more money. A leftward shift of the money supply curve indicates that the supply of money has decreased in the economy, and a lesser quantity of money is now available for use, no matter the nominal interest rate in the aggregate economy. Higher or lower interest rates doesn't matter. Banks and financial institutions now have less money. Let's take a look at how money demand and money supply can change nominal interest rates and influence economic performance by putting the two together in the money market graph. This is the money market graph. The money supply curve represents the quantity of M1, M2, and M3 money supplied in the economy by the Federal Reserve, regardless of the nominal interest rate. The money demand curve represents the quantity of money demanded by consumers and borrowers at every nominal interest rate. Through voluntary exchange, money supply and demand set an equilibrium nominal interest rate in the money market. This rate is the price at which money can be acquired and used. Changes in either the supply or demand for money will change the nominal interest rate in the money market, which impacts investment spending and economic performance in the aggregate economy. For example, Suppose that the United States experiences economic growth and real GDP output increases. As employment increases, consumers will have more disposable income and will purchase greater quantities of real GDP output. This increase in consumption will lead to an increase in the demand for money in the United States economy. An increase in the demand for money will cause the nominal interest rate in the United States to increase. However, because the Federal Reserve controls the money supply, the quantity of money currently supplied in the money market does not change because it is fixed, even when the nominal interest rate increases. This new, higher nominal interest rate means that it is now more expensive to borrow money in the United States economy, and so firms will reduce their investment spending in order to avoid more expensive loans, which ultimately causes aggregate demand to decrease in the United States economy. Now suppose that the Federal Reserve decides it's appropriate to release more M1 funds into the money market, causing the money supply to increase. With greater quantities of money available, the nominal interest rate in the United States will decrease. To take advantage of the lower nominal interest rate, consumers and borrowers will demand a greater quantity of money, establishing a new equilibrium in the money market. This new lower nominal interest rate means it is now less expensive to borrow money in the United States economy, and so firms will increase their investment spending in order to take advantage of the less expensive loans, which ultimately causes aggregate demand to increase in the United States economy. Now suppose that the Federal Reserve decides it's appropriate to take M1 funds out of the money market, causing the money supply to decrease. With lesser quantities of money available, the nominal interest rate in the United States economy will increase. In order to avoid higher nominal interest rates, consumers and borrowers will demand less quantities of money, establishing a new equilibrium in the money market. This new, higher nominal interest rate means that it is now more expensive to borrow money in the United States economy, and so firms will reduce their investment spending in order to avoid the more expensive loans, which ultimately causes aggregate demand to decrease in the United States economy. Finally, suppose the United States economy experiences deflation as product prices decrease. Now that goods and services are less expensive, Consumers simply don't need as much money to buy them, leading to a decrease in money demand in the United States economy. A decrease in the demand for money will cause the nominal interest rate in the United States to decrease. However, because the Federal Reserve controls the money supply, 
The quantity of money currently supplied in the money market does not change because it is fixed, even when nominal interest rates decrease. This new, lower nominal interest rate means that it is now less expensive to borrow money in the United States economy, and so firms increase their investment spending in order to take advantage of less expensive loans, which ultimately causes aggregate demand to increase in the United States economy. And that's the money market. Be sure to subscribe to the channel by hitting the red button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. We have full video lectures on every topic in macro and microeconomics, as well as quick macro and micro minute videos for cram sessions and quick reviews. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for my types of monetary policy video, or you can click here for my effects of monetary policy video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on You Will Love Economics.